Welcome back to Wicked Wi-Fi 101. The time has come for me to show you how to connect your Wicked IoT device to AWS. Once connected, you will be able to publish MQTT messages and subscribe to MQTT topics. That's everything you need to build your own IoT devices that connect with the world. The Wicked SDK contains libraries that make it easy to create MQTT firmware. There is a general purpose MQTT library in libraries slash protocols slash MQTT, and one that we built specifically for you to use with AWS in libraries slash protocols slash AWS. We will focus on the AWS libraries here but the solution projects for the class show examples using both the AWS library and the general MQTT library. So feel free to browse those if you wanna see different libraries in action. To include the library in your project, you first need to include it in the make file and include the header files in your C source files. In addition to the library, there are several demo applications included in the SDK that can be used as a starting point for using MQTT with AWS. These applications are all located in the apps slash demo slash AWS directory. The projects are IoT PubSub Publisher, which publishes messages to a topic when a button is pressed on the kit, IoT PubSub Subscriber, which subscribes to a topic and controls an LED on the kit based on the messages it received, and these two can talk to each other through the cloud. IoT Shadow, which shows how to interact with a thing via the shadow and also demonstrates using a temporary configuration AP and a web server in the kit to set up the Wi-Fi configuration and the security certificates. Greengrass slash Publisher, which shows how to publish using AWS Greengrass, a software package that extends the AWS cloud capabilities to local devices. Greengrass slash Subscriber, which shows, you guessed it, how to subscribe using AWS Greengrass. First, I'll show you the IoT Publisher project, and afterwards, I'll walk you through all of the source code. The security certificates and key are included in the make file. The firmware needs Amazon's root certificate, the certificate for your device, which you created in the last chapter, and the private key for your device. Amazon already has the public key for your device since we created it along with the certificate and the private key, so we don't need to provide that in the firmware. First, let's copy the Amazon Trusted Services root CA certificate into the resources slash apps slash IOT folder. We need to delete the existing root ca.serve file and rename the one that we downloaded to that exact name since that's what we're going to use in the firmware. Next, let's delete the client.cer and the privkey.cer files from the publisher subfolder and copy in our files. Again, rename them to match what the firmware is going to look for. Notice that the AWS root CA certificate is at the resources slash apps slash IoT level, while the device certificate and key are at the IoT slash publisher level. That's done so the publisher and the subscriber could have different certificates. For example, to have a different policy. But the AWS root CA is always the same, so we put it at the shared location. Now, I'll go back to the make file and add the custom platform that we discussed back in chapter two to the list of valid platforms for this project. Otherwise, it won't build for the kit slash shield combination that I'm using. Before I forget, I'm going to do a clean since I just modified the files from the SDK that are not in C files or header files. I wanna make sure that the make process will see all of the latest versions. There is one change that needs to be made to the source code. 
If you go to line 108, you will see that the name of the AWS broker is there. You should replace that with the name of your virtual broker. If you don't know the name, you can find it from the AWS console by clicking on the settings. One other thing to note is the thing name on line 117. Since we aren't using the shadow, we don't need to change it. But one important thing to know is that everything that connects to your broker must have a unique name. If not, the things will conflict with each other and things won't work properly. See, there's that complicated things will break things thing. Next, remember to update the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi access point in the Wi-Fi config dct.h file, just like you did in chapter five. Finally, create a make target for the PubSub Publisher app and program it to the kit. From the UART terminal window, I can see that the kit has connected to the Wi-Fi network and it's made an MQTT connection to AWS. Next, I'll go to the AWS console and open the test client. From here, I can subscribe to messages from a topic. The publisher project uses the topic wicked underscore bulb. I'll show you that in the firmware in a minute, but just trust me for now. This project doesn't send JSON, which is okay by the rules, but it's a bit unusual. So I'll just display the payload as a string and I'll subscribe to the topic. I press the button on the kit and looky there, we got a message that says light off. If I press the button again, it will send another message that says light on. And then the next message is back to light off. We now have an IoT connected light switch. How cool is that? Looking at the firmware, wicked underscore aws.h and aws common.h are included to provide access to the library functions and resources.h is included to provide access to the resource files, the certificates and the keys. Then we have a few defines for the topic and the messages that the firmware sends. Next is a structure for the security credentials. It's empty for now. A structure to set up the AWS endpoint. This is where you put your broker name earlier and a structure for the things info. In the main application loop, you will see the usual wicked init and wicked network up to get connected to the Wi-Fi. Next is a call to the helper function that takes care of the security credentials. It reads the AWS root certificate and the device's certificate and the device's private key from where we stored them in the resources directory. Then back in the main loop is a call to wicked AWS init. It takes the structure that contains the thing's info from earlier and the name of a callback function. The callback function is called by the library whenever an AWS event is received. You can see here that you get a callback for a connection, a disconnection, a publish event, a subscription event, and so on. In this case, the function just sets a variable during the connection and disconnection. After AWS initialization, the firmware creates an endpoint using the broker information structure from earlier, and then it opens up the AWS MQTT connection. Finally, the firmware goes into a loop in which it waits for a semaphore that is set when the button is pressed. When that happens, if there is a connection, the appropriate message is published using the function wicked AWS publish. You give it a handle to the AWS connection, the topic name, the message, the message length, and the quality of service that you want. That's it. Really not that difficult, is it? I know you can make it work. Now let's do the same thing for the subscriber app. We allowed all IoT actions when we set up the policy for our certificate. So we can just copy over the device certificate and private key from the publisher resources to the subscriber resources. The AWS root CA certificate is always the same and it is in a shared location already. So that's all set. 
Now let's run clean to make sure that the build will see all of the latest certificates. Then update the broker name in the source code. It's on line 119 this time. We will again just leave the thing name on line 128 as it is, since it's different from the name that we used in the publisher. In the make file, I'll add the custom platform to the list of valid platforms for this project. Next, don't forget to put your Wi-Fi SSID and password in Wi-Fi config dct.h for this project. Finally, create a make target and program it to the kit. In the UART terminal, I can see that it connects to Wi-Fi, opens up an MQTT connection to AWS, and then subscribes to the topic wicked underscore bulb. On the test client, I will choose publish to a topic, and I'll enter the topic name. Again, this project isn't expecting JSON for some reason, so I'll delete the JSON stuff and just enter light on. Now I click the Publish to Topic button and look, the LED turns on. I can then send light off to turn the light off. Now we have an IoT connected light bulb. How awesome is that? The firmware is very similar to the Publisher app, so I won't go through it here in detail, but you can review it on your own. One thing I will point out is the AWS callback function. In the case of the subscriber, it handles the payload received event which is called when a message is received for a topic that you've subscribed to. Now, let's put it all together. I'll plug in one kit with the publisher firmware and another with the subscriber firmware. When I press the button on the publisher kit, it will send a message all the way to amazon.com and the AWS MQTT broker. The broker then pushes the message on the subscriber and the light turns on. Now we have an IoT connected light switch controlling an IoT connected light bulb through the cloud, all using the wonderful magic that is the Wicked SDK. This is the end of HTTP and MQTT. I'm going to talk more about AMQP and CoAP in later chapters. If you've watched all of the videos up until this point, or read the manual on your own, you now have all of the tools you need to create a complete IoT device using Wicked. You can set up platform files for your own custom hardware, read sensors from the pens using GPIOs or I2C, provide user information using LEDs or the OLED display, use the RTOS, use libraries, connect to Wi-Fi, and AWS using secure TLS sockets and send and receive MQTT and HTTP messages. In the next chapter, I'll demonstrate a complete IoT device and challenge you to replicate it on your own as the final test of your newly developed, wonderful, fantastic IoT skills. As always, you can post your comments and questions in our Wi-Fi developers community. Or, as always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore Hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at askiotexpert. But I would encourage you, you've got the tools to win. Go forth and build amazing devices.